there, this is Sherry Hayes with MomDelights.com and I'm here today to talk to you about homeschooling for cheap or free. So in this one we're going to do a curriculum reveal for my 11 year old daughter. Stay tuned. So sometimes when we talk about homeschooling for cheap and free we get this idea that we're just putting a whole bunch of garbage together and it's just kind of old and boring and awful but it's the opposite of that it's actually more exciting but the thing is we need to build up a little bit of enthusiasm and do a little bit of packaging because a lot of times it isn't really uh, the enthusiasm gets built up by the package have you noticed that like you can get the most insignificant gift but if someone has taken the time to package it in the right way when you do finally open it it's exciting and it's wonderful and uh, there is joy and there is an emotion that's conveyed so when I'm talking about homeschooling with cheap or free materials there's still a lot of packaging you can do to make these materials so special and so wonderful you know I didn't have to spend a lot of money this year on my materials because I used a lot of things that um, I had on hand and, and I used used materials and things that I got for free that I printed out or just cheap stuff but what I did is I am packaging in such a way that my girls are so excited they can't wait to start so I'm going to show you first what I chose to put all of these materials in. Here is a little basket I got over at Roth's Dress for Less. I think I paid maybe eight dollars for it, seven or eight dollars for it, and it has a lid, right? But it's mesh on wire, and I don't suggest this for little kids or kids with lots of energy because like if I had little boys they'd be sitting on this and crunching it <laughs> but I only have three girls left at home so they are so excited they think these are so like they're decorative instead of being boring okay I'll show you what I would use with like little kids and what I use for years and years this is the way to go if you've got kids that are younger or you have kids a little more energetic I got that one for 25 cents I got a set of four of those for 25 cents a piece at a Goodwill outlet and they were covered with spider webs and mud and I cleaned them and they've been lasting for lots of years but anyway back to these nice ones so they're so pretty and they hold so many gorgeous gorgeous things for one thing I have a set of now okay these are the cheaper ones these are the crazy art ones they're not the Crayolas they're cheaper but I'm using this with this dollar store yeah dollar store calligraphy book I couldn't believe it when I saw it either but this is going to teach my daughter how to do this kind of lettering which is very popular right now using just regular markers I thought that she would like that uh, she can write with cursive but but her cursive is a little bit hard to read so I'm hoping this will give her more practice without making her feel like you're not doing it right you know like that <laughs> I hate it sounding like that don't you so that's one of the things that are in here another is this nifty little thing and what I did is I printed off free articles on the internet that deal with creation and some and uh, uh, early man, ancient man how he wasn't as stupid as we think he was and um, you know how did could it be that God created the world in six um, actual days and stuff like that just stuff I wanted to think about um, the Greeks and the Romans and what their culture was really about uh, the races are there such thing as races are all we are we all part of the human race and it, that's important too so I got all that stuff in here for her to be reading and then I got this right here and this was a really neat find for me I got this I hope I hope they have more of these this year um, over at Walmart but this is a splurge okay this is a real splurge this is like four dollars I think four dollars 383 or something like that and this is one of those binders that won't fall apart it's like one unit instead of being like the ones that are like cardboard and they're like they've got the vinyl on top those always fall apart this was really really going to be good so I got this and I'm putting in here um, like I got um, some different things I'm printing I'm printing out uh, I printed out her McGuffey's um, lesson sheets because um, I ran there I have the McGuffey's books right but <laughs> 
they ran out of pages so I've got to order new ones but until then I also have a PDF of, of lesson sheets for her McGuffey's reader so I put that in here I found some um, some Bible puzzles that uh, the, some crossword puzzles that I'm putting in here I'm putting them in her sis their sisters in her sisters books as well and so you know like musical instruments in the Bible and stuff like that it'll be fun then I have these sheets these are going to be for her arithmetic she, she already wrote the numbers in for her different lessons and then I'm going to tell her what problems to do in each of those and I'll show you that in a minute so anyway so I've got a lot of different things like that in here um, this is going to be her weekly checklist I got this from scattered squirrel and I suggest that you go there and you'll find all kinds of nifty things for that. Um, I have our daily how we do things, like what she's supposed to do first, second, third, and fourth, and how long she's supposed to spend on each item. But I'm also using a point system, which I'll have to share with you. That'll be fun. I'm going to put a lot of this stuff on a blog post that I'm putting together, and you'll, you'll be able to see the, the links and all the different things that I'm putting on there. I, I actually got a geography little curriculum thing from Dollar Tree and I copied it and put it in here. Yeah, I'm doing that. And I, I found a website that had a whole bunch of stuff on music. So I'm like, these are the different periods of music and the, 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 they have like crosswords of the instruments and they have all kinds of stuff on there. It's from an, uh, a, um, an orchestra that put this, this educational stuff out. So it's really kind of fun. Like here's how the orchestra seats and stuff like that. So she's going to be studying mu music this year, like the history of music and different composers. And she's been doing a little, a little bit of that anyway, but she really likes it. I've got some reference things in here, like some basic um, maps. Basic. We live in like um, in the West, so like the Northwest. So we have a map of that. And there are the United States and the world and all that kind of thing. And I also have some special filler paper. And this filler paper actually has a plastic strip where the holes go so that it won't, they won't tear out as easily. Because we're, we're going to be doing essays and I want her to be able to keep these essays and look back on them with fondness. In the back pocket, I took a pad of um, drawing paper. Um, from the Dollar Tree and I cut it to eight and a half by 11 and I'm sticking this back here for you know different sketches she wants to do or if she wants to do a uh, free um, uh, like a freehand freewheeling uh, notebooking pages she can use that paper so and she's going to personalize the cover there's a slot to personalize the cover so she's going to be doing that um, I am also in here I have a copy of Pinocchio and I have a video I don't know if I'm gonna the video kind of wasn't very good quality, but I bound this using dental floss. Yeah, I know. I um, printed this out uh, two on a page with Adobe. This is a Google. This is from Google Books, by the way. And so I printed that two two to a page, double sided, and then I three hole punched it. I you have to if you're going to do it on the side like this, you have to um, either have an adjustable three hole punch or you have to do it by hand. But I did three holes here and, and I sewed it with dental floss and then I put this this is actually um, a report cover that I cut and then I used um, duct tape and I put it here so now she has the whole book of Pinocchio she'll, she'll be reading this this year and I will show you now what I'm going to do for her so I found this now every once in a while I splurge on something that I think is going to be a really good reference book that I can use with lots of kids or for years to come or Loan it out to the grandkids. <laughs> no, that's what I'm thinking. But anyway, this will be for all of us. This is a visual guide to grammar and punctuation from Dorlin Kindersley, DK. And I like this because it has pictures. It talks about like comparatives and superlatives. And then it has pictures and it has like little nifty sayings that you remember. And it has little quizzes, but they are so sweet and, and fast and easy that I mean they're like eating candy so this is like the grammar book that's like candy <laughs> you can sit with your child and just go through any age you can go through this and talk about the different parts of speech and different 
um, you know, sentences. I mean, this is just an amazing book, and it would not be hard to teach your child from this book alone. But we're going to do other things too. You know, I know a lot of you know that I have something called Gentle Grammar that I offer um, on my blog for free. You can get a free download, or you can purchase the books on Amazon. They're already done up for you. There are four levels, and they take a child from just beginning to barely know how to write sentences, and I teach them kind of like how to make short compositions. They teach them basic punctuation without ever. I mean, I think the word noun may, might be used five times in the whole set. And so they don't learn the jargon, but they learn how to write. And so I think that, you know, they're, they're really sweet. And my daughter has gone through all of them. So now she's ready for something more stringent. So um, I don't really want to put her in Harvey's yet, because I, I think that'll really bog her down and she won't get anything out of it. But um, on OurHouse.com, in her free links freebies links or something uh, section of her uh, blog I found or website I found this um, the child's own English book and it uses prose and poetry and it it's kind of like an Emma Searle kind of an idea first lessons in English or whatever and um, it's very sweet and very easy to use so I'm gonna have her do that next so if you wanted to do that with your child, you could. I highly recommend it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, I tell you, when she starts using it, we'll find out. But I read through it. I think it's going to be great. It's going to be great. <laughs> um, also in this little, like I said, I'm trying to make this really special. So also in this little basket, I am putting in um, one of these uh, business pad, legal pads and uh, a stem. This is for taking notes and different things while she's reading because she's going to be needing to use this information in her writing projects. And I don't want to show you this. This is going to be so great. So I created this little activity book for all the things that she's going to be. I haven't even gotten to the heart and soul of what she's going to be doing. <laughs> but I got this little, act, I, I made this, I made this. Um, I took the covers from one of those um, little folders with pockets on the side and I cut it and to you know to fit in eight and a half by eleven and I had it spiral bound and then I, I also I went on um, Microsoft Publisher and I used Clipart etc and I also used Graphics Fairy and I created activity pages and these activity pages go with the bookshelf for boys and girls and I'm going to use that exclusively almost for all of the different literature and history and all the different things I wanted to learn this year. And I will show you, um, I'm using only a certain amount of volumes of those, however. Um, the first volume I'm going to use is volume two, and this will take her from um, the fable, Aesop's fables and other fables, and you know, just some through some not really nice um, stories and um, uh, uh, poetry for childhood. She's really precocious for her age. She can read at a college level, but she's a little girl and she just needs to know little girl things. And it's sometimes she doesn't know what to do with herself. So I think when she reads these, she'll get so excited. And you know, if you have someone who's struggling with, with reading at the age of 11, don't feel bad. I've had lots of those. <laughs> but I think that she's going to, and even, even a struggling reader, but just to get them started, if you just start them at the beginning of the book, with just the, the fables and just have them read a little bit at a time. They're really short and sweet. Just kind of build up their muscles, their reading muscles, you know? It's really good for them. The first volumes, uh, one, uh, it's not volume one in this series, has um, the nursery rhymes. And oh, they're so precious. And just uh, stories for early childhood. And she and I, we read those over and over again. And volume three uh, concentrates on fables and fairy, I mean, on fairy tales. And so she and I, we read those fairy tales. And we also read my bookhouse fairy tales and we read those things and the tall tales and the fairy tales and over and over again and we just had a great time with that and I suggest before you get your child reading anything else make sure they have nursery rhymes and fables and fairy tales just get them all enthused in those and they'll set such a wonderful foundation uh, a series of readers that will help you with that are the um, uh, Treadwell and Free uh, set of reading literature Look for that, and I'll try to put a link below because those there's a really easy. You can find them on yesterday class. Yesterday's classics already printed out. I think they must have them still. So this is volume four of that same set. This is stories uh, and songs from from um, many lands. And so this has to do with uh, there there are some um, Greek and Roman mythology which we're gonna kind of lightly go over, but she has to be you know 
uh, a bread of that. I and mean, she has to be um, yeah, familiar with that stuff. Then we're going to, then they have like from Asia, there are stories from Asia, Africa, and America, all kinds of wonderful things. And the back is filled with um, folk songs and hymns and um, uh, all kinds of good stuff. So we're going to learn some songs in the back that maybe she didn't know before, but I kind of like when I was a kid in school, we did that stuff. And so I don't know if they do that anymore, but we did. So we're going to do that. And volume six is all about art and music. And if you are a Charlotte Mason fan, you are going to love this because we got architecture, we have stained glass, we have um, just amazing, the whole first, oh look at that, I think that's Vermeer, it's Vermeer, isn't it? It's, um, yeah, oh, this is Van Eyck. Okay, so anyway, they ha she has full pages of art that she's going to be able to enjoy. Yeah, it's all in here. And so we are just going to enjoy that. I wish they would produce books like this again. I'm telling you, this is a homeschooler's dream, this set of books. Is anybody listening? Oh, no. <laughs> so anyway, so this the first part of this book is art and architecture. The last part is a history of music and composer study and even teaches some basic music notation. Yeah. So when you go through it, you listen to the music suggested and boy, and you do composer study, it's just amazing stuff. I know, I know. Why don't they do it like a modern set like this? I don't know. I, I think parents just stop buying them, and so they stop producing them. Maybe, maybe they 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 have re, they do have produce them. I don't know. Maybe you know something I don't. So, volume eight then is Bookland Classics, and I'm using this as my spine. And almost all these books mentioned, and almost all the poetry mentioned in this book, is public domain. And you, you remember that um, activity book I showed you just a minute ago? I am using these books as a spine to make that. So I'm going to try to um, create that in such a way that you can take advantage of those same activity sheets and put together your own stuff from public domain sources or, you know, from books that you can buy. And you can take advantage of that too. So I'll try to have that for free as soon as I can get to that blog post. <laughs> so anyway, I think that you uh, would really like So this has stuff like... So this book includes things such as Pinocchio and Heidi and Robinson Crusoe and, you know, different books, uh, Wizard of Oz and um, Alice in Wonderland. They're all in here. So we are going to, by and large, now not always, like some of these books I don't want her to read, like Gulliver's Travels. I mean, I think it's okay in snippets, but I, don't, I think you kind of get lost if you try to read it on your own because you wouldn't have any relevant, you wouldn't have an, any um reference point for lots of the stuff that's included because it was really a political novel written, written to make a political statement at the time. But, you know, in parts it's kind of fascinating. So we're going to just read the parts that are in here on that. But I'm going to, like, uh, have her read Heidi and Pinocchio. I showed you that Pinocchio thing. I think, did I? So, um, yeah, I just showed you the Pinocchio thing. So, um, so she's going to be doing that for this. And then the last volume in this series that we are going to be using is um, Great Events and Famous People. This is all historical. Early America, you know, um, people around the world. It has the, the Underground Railroad. Um, it has Martin Luther King in it. Um, just all kinds of stuff. So she's going to be reading through this and doing notebooking pages and enjoying that. That'll be fun for her. And they have a science and nature volume in that set. However, I am a young earth creationist. So uh, I'm going to have her do dinosaurs by design. And um, I have a really, really ancient copy. There are newer ones. So she's going to be reading through this so she can get a really good foundation in that. And also what I did, this is really a lot of fun, is I found these really cool books called The First Of. And the first book of, and this is the first book of bees. My daughter Laura Lee, um, I had these bound just like the other one. My daughter Laura Lee, um, she designed covers for all of these books, and so I will have them for a free download. And on that that amazing blog post I'm going to create, and um, so these are some of the illustrations. This is like written on a fourth, fifth, sixth grade level. Um, these books are so fun. So fun. The, all about these, the different parts of the stinger. 
Oh, there's so many cool things. So this is bees. There are five titles that are in that are available for uh, to to download and print. And um, there are all of uh, the first book of bees, the first book of water, and that's this one right here. This is another cover cover my daughter created. And um, there is the here's a two page spread. These this is so fascinating. All the things they talk about in science books. So she's going to do this one and this one. And there's also first book of trees, first book of birds, and first book of stones. So she's going to be doing those. But at first she's going to be doing these, and later on we're going to pick up the other ones because they they're just so fascinating. She's so excited. So ourhouse.com, where I found the English, I also found a free Spencerian practice. I mean, you have to pay 15 bucks from Mott Media, and it's worth every penny because they are gorgeous. But 15 bucks from Mott Media, you can get the practice books for Spencerian and use those. And I have children that write Spencerian copper plate, and they have gorgeous handwriting. Uh, some of them did the whole system, but they hate it, so they never use it. But, um, but it is gorgeous. Let me show you what it looks like. I don't know if you can see that, but that's what you end up writing like, hopefully, when you get through this course. And here is here's some of the capitals. Just that. So anyway, there are practice sheets, and they're pretty gentle. But, um, you know, it depends on where your child is at in their ability, you know. I mean, this is upper elementary, right? So I'm using it for upper elementary, um, junior high, high school kind of stages. That's what that stuff's good for. Also, I'm going to throw in some spelling from, um, I forget what the company is that makes this, but I, I got it in the big, thick, comprehensive uh, um, curriculum book. I just tore out the pages, but you can buy this spelling separately. I'll try to link it below. I just forget. Right now, I can't remember the name of the company, but we're going to throw this in just because this has editing skills and uh, dictionary skills, but really, this is not going to be our main way of learning spelling. We're going to learn spelling from her writing, and also, I'm putting spelling rules on the board, like one a week with examples, and we're going to talk about some of the rules of spelling, and that's about all I'm going to do except for our bread and butter, which is... The McGuffey Readers, and you knew this was coming, right? Because uh, we have not abandoned these books. These books have been so, so wonderful in our homeschooling. They teach children how to read and write and comprehend and all the wonderful things you want them to do with the English language. And they are cheap, and you can find these in the public domain. You can find them everywhere. And they are excellent. And they teach values, and they teach Bible, and they teach all the things you want your kids to know. And I have free downloads of lessons, and I also offer books on Amazon that are like like workbooks, but not really. I call them lesson books that you can use with these lessons, and they are amazing. So if you haven't heard about it yet, you got to jump on the McGuffey's bandwagon. Okay, anyway. <laughs> now besides all that, okay, my daughter is also going to be able to choose for herself a few books. And I actually kind of bought this for her. But I knew she would like it because she wants to be a surgeon when she grows up and she loves everything about the body and about medicine. So I got her this book about Clara Barton and she's going to pick a couple others that she just wants to read. And we're going to add that all in. So hopefully this will give her plenty to do, I think for maybe a year or two with all this all together. So um, this is our reveal and this is our package for her. I hope you like this. Please like and subscribe and click the bell so you can hear about what I'm using for my 13 year old and my 16 year old. Bye bye.